Hi everyone and welcome to the start of a brand new series in Unreal Engine 4 tutorials. This series is a brand new AI series and this time we're tackling how to do melee based AI. These are AI that you usually find in action adventure games where they want to go up and whack you with a stick or a sword or something. So for this I have imported in uh, two sets of marketplace content. I've brought in the Paragon characters of Greystone and Chimera with Greystone being the uh, protagonist, the main playable character, and Chimera being the enemy character. So I've imported those in, but obviously you can use whatever characters you like. In this episode, we're going to go over and set up the uh, the characters and get them animated at a basic level anyway, so they're ready to start adding on the AI in the future episodes. So I've already gone in and just added my Greystone character to... Um, the viewport mesh okay he's not got the animation blueprint attached to him yet because we're gonna make a custom one um, and I've also gone in and created a melee enemy character no code on it whatsoever I've just put on the mesh itself with no animation again so let's go ahead and set up the animation for our main playable character so main playable character we're gonna go into animation and animation blueprint and we're going to choose the Greystone Skeleton. And we're going to name this one um, Player Character. Let's make sure we camel case it. Character Add him. And we're going to open this up. Now obviously the, the Paragon packs come in with all the animations. So you can see all the animations down here. Um, so it's just a matter of tying these up into a state machine and so on and so forth. So let's first of all start a state machine up. Add new state machine. And we're going to name this one movement. And open it up. And in here, I'm going to drag out from my entry node and add a state. And this is going to be the idle slash walk slash run. Actually, no, we'll do idle. We'll just do idle. We'll do idle. We'll do movement in a separate one. We'll do idle in here and open this up. Now I'm going to find my idle animation. And there it is. And drag that into my blueprint. So now, you should, well, actually, I've got to go back first. If I go back and plug that in and then compile it, you should see the idle animation playing in our viewport on the top left here. Okay. So that's our idle. Next thing we need to do is set up the Blend space. Now I don't can't remember if this comes with the blend space already. Uh, this looks like it is here. Let's open it up and have a look. So a blend space is where you blend in different animations based on. Don't know what that's meant to be. All right. but we'll carry on with it. we'll use this anyway and see what it says so this is a two dimensional blend space and they've set up already so we can use this one for what's this one this one any better this looks the same to me uh, trail mode that's it it's just running as a one dimensional one we'll do the locomotion blend space Okay, so I'm going to go into my movement here, and from idle, I'm going to create another state called walk, and open this up, and let's drag in that blend space, and uh, I don't know which one it wants us to use, but we'll, uh, we'll use this one, they look the same to me, we'll plug that in like so. Okay, so this needs a direction and a speed attached to it. Now to do that, we need to make two variables in our animation blueprint. I'm going to go speed, and this will be a float. And we're just going to do direction as well. And let's plug those in whilst we're here. Now at the moment we're not setting any value in these. We need to go into our event graph and set those values up. So let's go over to the event graph. In the event graph, we've got the event blueprint update animation and try get porn owner. We need this to check whether or not the animation uh, pawn is still there and valid. So let's check if it's valid. Using the is valid node. 
So they'll only do carry on if the pawn actually exists. Otherwise, you get errors. Okay, so with that in mind, we can use this to get the movement component of our character. And from there, we can get their velocity. And velocity gives us their speed and their direction. Okay, so with velocity here, I can get the speed by getting the length and vector length. And I'm just going to drag in my speed and set that. Then to get the direction, we take the velocity and we need to normalize it. This will force it to basically take out any speed value from it and just get us the direction. So this normalization will get us direction, which we can then use this. Oh. Set direction. And set that as the yaw from this thing here. So I'm going to split that. And with this is going to be using the Z value. I hit compile. With that done, we now got the error saying, uh, or warning rather, that the idle to walk will never be taken. So that will happen because if I go back to my state graph, you can see I've got this transition going from idle to walk. We haven't set up any rules for it to determine when it should go into that. And we're basically going to say when the speed is greater than zero. In fact, we'll do 0 0.1 and put that into the transition there. And that will transition to the walk. We need to also make it go back to idle. So tra drag an arrow from walk to idle and open this transition. And when speed is less than or equal to 0 0.1 transition back we can now go into our player character and I'm going to go to the viewport so we can see it happen I'm going to click on the mesh and in my anim class on the right hand side details panel I can change this to my player character anim and there he is now I should be able to compile that and push play to test it out so there you have the character running around just fine. I haven't got to jump in there yet. We'll add that in a moment. But there we have basic animation to and from idle to walk. Okay. Nothing too fancy yet. We'll get to that down the road. Now, to, in order to allow us to add in attacks and all that stuff later on, we need to go into our animation graph. And where we've got movement, plugged into the output pose, we need to put something in between this. And we're going to use this slot for this. Slot default slot. And then plug that into the result there. Now if you go to the slot name over to the right hand side, you can see here I've got a list of load of slots already made. That's because we've been using Paragon assets. They come with that. So in here, I can use upper body slot if I like. And so I'm going to use upper body slot and but what I'm going to do is show you how to create your own slot if you're using your own characters. So actually let's make our own character. Let's put it back to default slot and make our own character slot for this. So to do that, we need to go into the animation folder for my character here. Oh. Go into animations. And let's have a look at uh, the an attack. And let's see, have they done the montages already? That's right, we'll make our own montage. Oh wait, no, we've got some montage here. So if I go to attack primary A montage, they've put it into default upper body. To make your own slot, go to anim slot manager, which is a tab down in the right hand corner. If it's not there, you can access it through the window uh, options up here saying anim slot manager. And you go add slot and you just choose the name for your slot. Upper body refer, so that means we're gonna refer to uh, the top half of the body for this animation. This allows us to blend two sides of animations together uh, through the slot mechanic. So you go through that and add that to your game. And we're going to use this for upper body there. What this means is that when we play an animation that's going to use the slot upper body, it means it's going to overwrite the movement and go and play an output. Okay. However, what will happen here that it will just override the whole animation whatsoever and just play just the, that montage, for example. But for example, if you want it to blend between the two bones, we need to be able to blend them 
with a layered blend. It all sounds confusing, I know, but I'm trying my best. Bear with me. Um, so a movement here, we need to cache this movement because you can't add this to multiple nodes. You can only go into one node. So we're going to cache it, which basically means we're going to save it. And I'm going to name this one movement cache. And I can now right click and search for the movement cache. So I can use the cached pose movement cache. I need two of those. Now, one is going to be connected to nothing. And this second one is going to be connected to the slot. We're then going to blend these two together. So this one is the movement unedited. And this is the movement when it's been overwritten by the upper body slot. We then use the layered, oh, sorry, layered blend per bone. And base pose would be the one that's got nothing attached to the cache. The blend pose zero would be body slot there. By clicking on the layered blend per bone, that means we can choose which bone we're going to blend from. Now for this, we look at the skeleton. Here you can have the skeleton and we want to choose a, a position which makes sense for upper body. And usually this is a spine point. So let's find a spine and make sure we get the name of it correct. So we've got spine underscore zero one, and that looks like being a good position to use there. So I'm going to go back to my blueprint. Oh, uh, sorry, animation blueprint. And not that one. Go away. We want our one. Um, and then we go up to the top and go to new layer setup. And then add a branch to this. And we can determine what bone we want to blend at. So we have a spine underscore zero one and it has to be named exactly how you it's spelt in the skeleton we can then add that to our output pose and hit compile and that's the setup that we need for our character now i'm only going to do it for the main character in this video but you do this exactly the same but for your enemy character with whatever mesh they're using whatever animations they're using so go ahead and do that ahead of ahead of me and in the next episode we'll start working on our ai Thanks very much for watching. If you want to watch that next part right now, you can head to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where a donation of just $1 will get access to that video, plus many, many others. Big thank you to everyone who's been supporting me and waiting patiently for this series to begin. It's been a long time coming, so thank you for your patience and your support. If you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like this video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.